welcome to the best of everything. I am Ruben Paul. And once again, I am joined by my technically challenged friend, the one and only, the 90-year-old man trapped inside of a younger man's body. The one and only, <laughs> the complainer, Johnny Sanchez. What's up, brother? Oh, yeah, man. It's been what? Yeah, te technically, technologically and technically and all that. <laughs> Even with B school today, dude. Just they, add, of course, they had to add something new, and bro, they added. Everything's been going great. We're catching up. We're figuring everything out. Oh, we got a new thing. You guys need to start logging into. On top of the other twenty-five things that we have to log into. <laughs> What's interesting is when I took when I watched the webinar, the the very first uh, webinar with the principal. I remember it was a bunch of, of parents were asking questions and she kept going, it's real simple. You're just gonna go to Clever. Once you log into Clever, Clever's the home base and everything you just go to, that has not been the case, dude. That has not been the case. All right, hold on a second. Well, I can't find, me, oh, there we are, there we are. Let me, let me just say this. I wanna believe you, Johnny, I really oh. do. But until I'm there to, to sit in, then I'll be the judge of that. Well, you know, because other parents, other parents are having problems, and then, and even when it gets complicated for Jennifer, then I know it's there's it's legit because okay. she's, right. she's good with the stuff. So she's okay. good with it, and she's getting lost. Okay. okay. All right, hold on. Uh, Leslie, Leslie is laughing at you at being te technically uh, challenged. Challenged. Um, I gotta come so, up with a word. Tech, technic. How do you? What would you have with technically and challenged together? Oh no, we Se don't have to come up with anything, Johnny. You really don't. We can just we can move on from that. <laughs> I can't even, uh, dude. My brain is just mush anyway. I can't. Well, well, real quick, uh, I just want to start off. If, if there's any uh, Clippers fans uh, listening right now, uh, I just want to say, <laughs> Lake Show, baby, you guys ain't shit. Oh, uh, God. I just want to say that. Uh, our dear friend PK, uh, uh, it was hurt and emotional and crying. All my, I feel uh, for PK, bro. I feel for PK. I don't feel as 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 much for you know E Griffin. Yeah. Well, here's the you thing, know. man. I, I get uh, people. Uh, White Heart, uh, my boy, uh, one of the best DJs in the world, starting from scratch. What's up, Scratch? Uh, I will say this. Uh, there are a lot of Clipper fans in LA. I don't know where they came from. They just appeared all of a sudden, and um, it's weird. It's like a. It feels to me like a lot of Clipper fans are Clipper fans just because they don't want to be Laker fans. You know what I mean? Like they just want to go against the Lakers. Like man, everybody roots for the Lakers. Like, I mean, you grew up yeah. in LA. The Lakers are your team. You know, Clippers. Yeah. Uh, you know. But anyway, uh, so Joey Wells, PK, Suli, Eric Griffin. Oh, that's right. Um, uh, <laughs> same old Clippers. Like they say, Clippers going to clip. That's exactly what they did. And now the Lakers are uh, four games away from going to the NBA Finals in search of their 17th championship. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it was – I you know, that's, that's what the Celtics are for. <laughs> <laughs> I know, huh? Um, <laughs> but it's just interesting, man. Um, like I, before this, you know, they started back up with the bubble and everything. Yeah. I really wondered like, oh, how's it going to be? You know, yeah. you know, I don't know if it's going to be the same, but you can jump in on this, Johnny, even with football, even with baseball, even – uh, with basketball, I haven't missed the fans at all when watching. Have you? As a matter of fact, I am enjoying it more. Of course you would. Without you don't the like annoying fans. <laughs> <laughs> I feel 
Oh, you're, you're, you know all that, dude? Oh, I'm so, I'm, oh, and here's, here's the best part. You know what I'm loving about this? What? Oh, no, those are, there's those obnoxious jerk fans. No offense, Philly and Boston fans, but uh, we know how annoying they can be when they get drunk. And I'm loving the fact that those dudes are having to sit at home, man, and they don't get their moment of – because some fans uh, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They you know, live, they live to, to – They live home. to get themselves yeah. on television to be – even at the basketball – even more so at the basketball games, dude, because some of those guys are right there when the player's walking back to the – you know, back to the, the, the bench. And uh -huh. you can see those guys – stand. Oh, I always hated those guys that stand up. Yeah, you sit down. Okay, LeBron, and it's like right. these guys—they must be at home like this, dude. <laughs> uh, for now, you guys who are listening, but I tell you, you who I—well, let me let me ahead. let me clarify something for everybody who's listening. Johnny just sat there with his arms folded, pouting at home. He's oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Fan that uh, that can't get to the game. Now, finish your thought. Go ahead, Johnny. But but at the same time. You know, my heart goes out to those wives whose husbands would normally be at the college, uh, no, not so much the college, but the, the, the NFL game, the NBA, the baseball game. Now the wives have to deal with that husband at home, pouting and complaining. That's the only thing I feel for. I feel for the women right now who, who's, who's, whose husbands don't get their glory at the, at the game of yelling and screaming at other people. And and the, the guys that yell and scream at, at visiting fans because they know they're outnumbered. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've never I've never been that type of guy. I've no, always, of course not. Yeah, I, but I have yelled at a, a, an opposing team's fan. And that was just because when they were up, for, they made their way to our section and just started like getting in our faces and talking and talking crap. Sure. So, when we sure. came back and won the game, of course, it was my time to, yeah. you know, give give it back. But uh, I just, miss, I just, I just missed that that release. Like, um, like what when people ask me, like, hey, what do you do for fun? What do you enjoy doing when you're not performing comedy? You know, as we know, comedy has been shut down, and sports has been shut down, and that was my my hobby. I loved going to to movies was a big thing yep. for me. You know I loved going to the to movies and then yeah. uh, going to sporting events uh whenever I whenever I can. So it, it, it just it just sucks right now to not be able to just go and, and have that really because that was my release. You know, now I've been yeah. trying to find it. So what have you been doing, Johnny? Honestly like hey what up Renee Garcia? Uh, what have you been hey, doing? Hey what? Yeah Renee Garcia chimed in. What's up? Very funny comic Renee Garcia. Ooh, whoop. So Johnny, I, I know this about you, but like, what have you been doing just for you? I know you spend a lot of time for B, but like, do you oh, feel like just- I've had, I've had literally no time for anything that I, well, I mean, I can, I'm not gonna really go out. I'm not gonna go meet people at a restaurant right now. Oh, yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Going out and meet people used to be your thing. That's right. Huh? Yeah, going out and meeting people and having drinks at a restaurant and things like that, or a bar. Was mm -hmm. is my thing, so I'm not doing that. Bees, this it's funny because Jennifer they had a um, a welcome to the parents thing last week, and um, Jennifer did it, her mom did it, and uh, and then it's real funny because the the amount of homework had been pretty pretty easy, um, and the teachers she said she was speaking to her third grade class teacher uh, parents, and she said how's the How's the load? How do you guys feel? And I guess all the parents are like, "Yeah, good, fine," because it wasn't that bad. It was, mm -hmm. it was just manageable. Well, starting the next day on last Friday, it's been overload. Well, uh, we talked about this privately on the phone, and I'm, I'm a curious, honest answer because I know what my parents would say uh, if they were still alive. So they give the kids the workload. But what what role do the teachers play? Is there any tutoring? Is there no help for the kids now? Is all that gone? Is it all on the parents? Because my dad would be like, where are your teachers? Oh. 
<laughs> well, can't they help you? Like, I mean, I mean, you can you can email them. Um, and then if any, like today, if anybody had a little issue and we were be we were beasting, also too, B has a a Chromebook, and some people get a good, excellent Chromebook, and some people theirs have glitches. You, you know, like we were trying to, she was guiding us through to get on that new that new app, that like Pledge of Allegiance app thing, and. Uh -huh. She, as soon as she was trying to click on um, share, it wouldn't even work. So you just brought something up interesting. So are kids still doing the Pledge of Allegiance in, um, in, in, in school? Well, they do it in South Carolina. They haven't done it yet out here. Mm, interesting. So, right. Interesting. So I don't know if they're getting ready to get into that and then they're going to start doing it in the beginning of the class. I mean, that was always the first thing we did, no matter what. I mean, regardless, Absolutely. it's the first day of school. So, um, but we were having problems, but you can you can stay after and she'll help you one up. But again, it's not like you're staying after class with a teacher in front of you. If you have glitches, then you don't get any help. Mm. So Man. and and now they're doing is is that and now they're you can see they're stepping up. So what I realized and what I was telling her mom is they're, they're trying to, they're, they would typically be at school for six hours, right? Six to uh -huh. six and a half. You put in like a half hour lunch. So six and a half hours. So somewhere around eight to two thirty would be typically their, their day. Yeah. They're, 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 they're doing all this. They're, they're doing their class somewhere around two and a half to three hours. Okay. Now I'm realizing there's so much homework because they have to fill those three hours, dude, that the, the child would normally be at school. So it's basically a half and half. It's half the teachers doing what they would have normally done, but now parents making up those two to three hours, you know, because you exclude PE, okay? You exclude PE lunch and, you know, whatever little fun stuff they would be doing. But you still got another, you have another two hours in there, hour and a half. So I feel like that's why they're starting to step up the work a little bit more because so really it's falling, half of it's falling on the parents and the other half is, is on the teacher. But if there's glitches, then there's nothing on the teacher because you can't, can't get them. Can't connect with them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's an interesting time. They're already, they're already talking about how in our school system, a lot of kids are going to fall behind when, sure. but worldwide, we are already behind. You know what I mean? Even when we're at full speed, we were behind. So it's going to yeah, be interesting yeah. to see. I, what yeah, I, don't, I don't know the long term effect. I mean, you know, and here's the other thing, too. You know, during, um, I mean, look, it's going to be a year where I'm sure a lot of kids are going to fall behind a little bit. But mm -hmm. look, when things get back to normal and next summer, you can always get a tutor. And try to catch up. I mean, there's summer school. I mean, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's, I hear parents say, oh, my God, it's going to affect my child for the rest of his life. No, it's one year. They'll get back on track. They're kids. You know, it's. Um, it's like when, they're, when they're young. I think it yeah. probably affects you more when you're older. You know what I mean? When you're on a time crunch. No, right. I get that. I'm talk yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the, the parents that are complaining in grammar school, in, in elementary school yeah. right now. I'm yeah. like, yeah. come on, take it easy. So some kids, some of us growing up, I mean, you know, some of us were, were in sports at age eight, Ruben, eight, nine years old. We're, we're, we're after school sports. Then we would come home. Then we'd have to have dinner and we have to cram in our homework. And the next day, so it, it can be done. It's, it's, they've got time. It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It'll work I, out. You know who I feel for is some of these uh, high school and college athletes that are not playing. And um, Ooh, I, come, I thought about that. I, I come from it from a, a, um, a perspective of, you know, I didn't get recruited until my senior year. Now, could you imagine if you're planning on getting a scholarship and you need that senior year for, for scouts to look at you, to give you an opportunity to go, man, that's tough, man. And then how about if you're in college and you need that year of film to try to get drafted to go to the pro. Yeah. Now that year, I mean, look at Burrow. If you think about Burrow, the, the Heisman Trophy winner from mm -hmm. LSU, could you yeah, imagine yeah. if he didn't have a senior year? Yeah, right. He, he wouldn't have probably even gotten drafted. 
Like, think about that, dude. Do you do you think they'll be making some type of adjustments though next year? They, they, I think they, they, they have to because it's it's unfair to a lot of to a lot of them who basically made these choices based on the opportunity to further their athletic career. You know, and you're just, you know, I know people want to say, oh, it's all about education, but I think the NCAA. Uh, has shown it's not all about education because they're fighting to play these games during COVID, during a pandemic, to let you know it's all about money. Yeah. You know, but there is, um, you know, there is, I, I, I do feel some some empathy for uh, the guys who just aren't going to maybe not have that last year that could literally change their lives. Yeah, I'm wondering. It, I agree with you. There's, I don't think there's any way to make up for it unless, like, what I was just about to say was maybe they'll be able to do more of those, you know, uh, um, the, the combines. You know what I mean? Like maybe they can have a few more of those during the spring that might be able to get these guys in front of them. But but the problem though, Johnny, is, you know, the combines is only like one criteria you would judge an athlete for like somebody could have like outstanding game film and just did okay at the combines and then somebody could have you know done shitty during the you know didn't have a good season and then they shine at the combine yeah. so it's just, you know what i mean it makes it tough wow. uh, stan, stan just uh chimed in he said uh the rumor is that high school football will be played in january on a shortened season and um oh Jeff, yeah yeah. And Jeff, uh, Jeff Keller said if it wasn't for his senior year, he would have never got drafted. Right. Um, uh, yeah, man. I know what you mean, man. Um, <laughs> that's for Jeff. That's for Keller. Um, yeah, man. Uh, Jeff Keller, another uh, funny comic Gabriel. that I haven't seen in a, in, a, in a while. But, yeah, I just kind of – I kind of feel – Peloton. Don't watch his Peloton thing. Oh, Jeff please. <laughs> Leave him alone, man. <laughs> let them let them work out, dude. Let them work sure. out. But you know when when you're born with these, you don't need no Peloton. Yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. I feel I feel for my 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 buddy's uh my buddy's kid uh because he's kind of in that situation of in a position to get a, a scholarship and um he won't be able to play, so they're just kind of sitting and waiting. That must suck, man. You know, to be in that yeah, position. I think it's, uh, uh, anyway, oh wait, real quick, my buddy Gabriel from uh Tulare was like, What's up? Uh mm -hmm. what's up, man? My cousin Cecilia, uh, Cecilia is watching. Appreciate we appreciate that. Appreciate you guys checking in. Hey man, I wanna I wanna bring up some because since we got you and I know Gabriel Alonzo's and that was he played football more, I think. I don't think he did track. But Jeffrey, uh -huh. get this, man. Uh, I, I was exchanging with some old buddies from uh, high school, and it was like a, guys that I ran cross country track with. And it just so I always wondered what I ran. I used to always say, I wish I would have timed myself in the 100 meters at some point when I was in high school. Because I always wondered uh -huh. what I would run, you know? Well, this one buddy of mine was like, oh, hey, man, do you remember the time that we were so ahead of uh, our opposing? Um, uh, track team, which is on the other side, Tulare Western, it was like a dual meet. They were, we were so far, they were just letting, they didn't have much of a team. I think at that, I don't know what happened, but everybody was doing whatever they wanted. I, I went ahead and just signed up for the long jump and I signed up for the hundred meters, even though that, I, at that time I was that doing. Sounds like, that sounds like the type of athletics you would do, just a free for all. Go ahead. Oh no, but it was a rare occasion that we were allowed to do that, right? So get this. Oh yeah. shoot! I have to write down what I did on a long jump, eighteen something, but that doesn't even matter. The hundred meters, yeah, eighteen seven, I think. That's not bad, right? It's okay. Oh, okay. Now remember, this is my junior year in high school. Okay. How tall also, were you? How tall were you? Were you, were you still? Were you still bucket sized? I was. I was just gonna explain. I was four foot one, my junior year. Bullshit. All right. Okay. Anyway, no, I was more no. like. I was like five. Here's the thing. I almost believed you, Johnny. That's how short you are. I almost yeah. believed you. Look at this. <laughs> how tall were you, though, in high school? I was, I was about five, five, two, probably five, two, five, three, somewhere in there. Dude, I, so he's, he gets the, the newspaper clipping and he, and he shares it on Facebook with all of us. And he's like, check this out, man. We're all doing different events because it, it, they didn't have a full team. 
And I, I came in, I don't know, second or third in a hundred meter because the other guys weren't running. Dude, I ran an 11.88. In the hundred meters? Yeah. I always and told people I thought I probably ran a 13 or 14 or 15. That's not bad. Well, probably at a Mexican high school, that's not bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. We didn't. No, the brothers were killing it, man. That, but I think they, they allowed us to run it. But I didn't even think I would have ran it that quickly for my hot, my size and me being a junior. And I, 1188, dude, is, my friend goes, he goes, dude, that's pretty respectable considering you were a, a distance runner. All right. Good for I, you, Johnny. I was just, listen, I was just happy that I found out what I ran in the 100. I always wanted to know what I ran in the 100. Did he did, did he send you the article or you should get that? Yeah, I, got, I, have, the, I have the article. Okay, good, good. So yeah. uh, at some point, I need you to submit that for proof. Well, I could probably find him right now. <laughs> I wonder what Jeffrey Keller ran in the hundred. I bet I wasn't too far behind. <laughs> Why the hell out of Jeffrey Keller? Um, yeah, it's just. Uh, have you? Um, have you watched that uh, that show on um, Jeff Jeffrey Keller said Lemonade is not bad. Oh, yeah. oh, oh! What? It, yeah, it's not. It's not good either. <laughs> you're not even. Why are you acting like you're doing the relay, Johnny? No, I'm, four, I, I, I'm saying I should have been in a four by one hundred, bra. Uh, Jeffrey Keller said ten nine is what he ran, so he was a. Uh, uh, a second faster than you, and that's is, a, that's, a, that's a big gap in 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 um in the hundred meter. Yeah, but man, big... dude, I'll take a second slower than Jeffrey Keller, who's who is probably what six one, and I'm over here at five one. So technically, I'm okay. faster. No, no. If you go by length of legs, I'm taking three steps to his one, bro. I'm technically faster. I was faster than Jeffrey Keller with the okay. high oh, Okay. Is that why Speeding Gonzalez was so fast? Oh. You know, <laughs> you could have said anybody else. You what? Did not have Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez was really fast. Oh, what, what is that? Riva, Riva, Andale, 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 Repa, Repa. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you. We've all, been, we've all been misrepresented. I totally get it. But damn, dude, nothing worse than those car the 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 Speedy Gonzalez with his buddies. Hey, senor, I want to go over here. El gato will let me go. I mean, no Mexicans talk like that. Even back then, they didn't talk like that. Hey, were you offended back then? No, we we Did liked it. I mean, we thought it was funny, but I just Did remember you? my. I just huh. I was going to say, isn't it funny as you get older and yeah. we look when we look back at the things yeah. that used to be yeah. on TV, we go, oh, like that shit would never fly today. People would be marching and trying to yeah. get it, you yeah. know, taken off, off TV. But uh, when I, when you did that voice and I, and I closed my eyes for a second, it sounded just like your dad. I knew you were going to say that. I'm going to tell my dad, I'm going to tell my dad you keep saying that, by the way. Oh, candy! Oh, oh God! <laughs> oh, he does not talk like that. <laughs> man, I wish I could make a trip trip up there to see him, man. Because I, I might I be up there this I might be up there this weekend because uh, I got I just trying to work out something with a um, uh, rental car situation because I have to get one and then leave it there. Oh, well, oh, anyway, okay. we'll one of those things. That. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this. I heard of a place, and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this in a second. Yeah, I want to get back place, to Is there a place called, uh, uh, a city called London that's near you? Near you? I was oh, reading my that like it was in Tulare County, a little oh, wow. city called London. And I was like, wow, I've never, it's, I know it's just a random thing, but I just I saw it online, and somebody said they were from London, California. And then I clicked on it, and it was like Tulare County. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I want to ask Johnny about that. I mean, I've never heard of it, but I feel like I was searching something before. And I, because you know, there's Paris, California, mm -hmm. there's obviously London, California. Um, but 
Wow, because, you know, Tulare County is pretty big, man. It, it goes east towards the Sierra Nevadas and the and the and the forest and the all that stuff. So um yeah it's weird it's, it's amazing how big Tulare County is but yet how nobody knows that the the town Tulare. It's yeah. weird. A question for you. Um have you seen that um Netflix uh docuseries called uh QB1? No. Oh uh, you should you should check it out man. It's it's uh it's it's good, especially if you you know if if you're a football fan and you like to hear stories of athletes going through, you know wow. that transition, you know blue chip athletes going from that tr transition from high school yeah. to college, and that's why like sometimes when, when we'll talk, you be like, how in the hell did you know that? Because sometimes you kind of follow somebody's career from high school and college, and then you yeah. see them in the pros, and it's kind of cool to see them from, you know. Seven, 16, 17 to now they're 21, 22 professional athlete. Now they're a million, they're a millionaire. Used to see them living in their parents' house, you know, in yeah. their room, with their posters on the wall, no car, right. asking their parents for lunch money and all that stuff. And then now, you know, they're on the biggest stage. But it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really inner, well, inner I still season. haven't finished um, Last Chance You this last yeah. season. That's, that's what Stan was saying. Lance, last, Lance. Oh. Last you is really good too. That's another uh, good documentary. I've been, you know, during this pandemic, um, been able to watch a lot of, uh, you know, good good stuff. But what was funny is it seems like you watch it all so fast. Like in the first six weeks, you you feel like you've seen everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. Well, you know what? Um, there's another one I want to watch. It's it's trying to. They're just trying to find the best um, Latino athletes. Um, it's called Last Chance Fool. Is it a Last Chance You? Last, last chance, chance Fool. That's what it. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. Fool. <laughs> but it's F U. It's F U, not not uh, F O O. They went F U because you know university. So it's a Last Chance Fool. Yeah. So if anybody uh, you know is into sports, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good sports documentaries. But I like documentaries just in general. I saw I saw one recently on. A, did you see the David Foster documentary? No, no. You, matter of fact, just, you're, familiar, you're familiar who he is, correct? I'm familiar with his name, but I'm not familiar with. But I the only reason why I jumped on it was because I just missed the uh, Lucille Ball documentary that's out on. But that's on reels, and I don't think I have that. I'm sure there's probably some way to yeah. uh, stream uh, it. Yeah, to streaming and watching online, but David uh, Foster. Why does that? Why does that name sound like David, something? David Foster uh, has. He's just known as a hit maker. He's he discovered Celine Dion. Uh, he, oh. he he made hits for Whitney Houston, uh, Barbara Streisand. Uh, the list goes on and on and on, and it's just great to see his journey and where he is now. And uh, one of my favorite stories is the story about uh, when they did the movie, The Bodyguard. And um, me and you talk about this all the time. Like, and we talked about it uh, earlier in this conversation, how, you know, one one decision can like change everything in your life. You know what I mean? Like just one, just one moment, you know what I mean? Yeah. Can, can change everything. And uh, he tells the story about when they did The Bodyguard with Kevin Costner he was doing uh, when, you know, Whitney did the Dolly Parton remake of I Will Always Love You yeah. and um, just how that came about. I won't ruin it, um, but it's a really, really, really good story. So if you have a chance to watch, it's on Netflix. If you have a chance to watch the David Foster documentary, it's great. Uh, he, he discovered Michael Buble. Uh, mm, great, he, he, he's Canadian. And um, just his body of work with all the hits, man, that that guy his Way to go, man. Good job, Hoser. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, I, that's get to recommend, I get to recommend some stuff. Can't just be you. Yeah, go uh, ahead. That's why I brought it up. I know you watch right, a lot of people. Uh, Love Island. Love oh. Island on CBS. Oh, um, Big Brother. Uh, uh, America's got AGT. Uh, Dancing with the Stars, by the way, um, 
Dancing with the Stars. I hear you. Humbled, man. Huh? Humbled. Oh, I thought you. I thought you were going somewhere. <laughs> it's not a joke, man. Um, <laughs> man, I, I'll tell you. You never want to in, man. <laughs> but you know, if Johnny. You know, if Johnny's laughing this hard. It's a good one. Uh, anyway. Um, Oh, but I, I am going to tell you, man, you know, um, hosting, uh, you know, the gig, hosting gigs are, are, are a lot harder than people think. And I did watch Dancing with the Stars with Tyra Banks. And let me tell you, man, it just showed how quick witted and funny Tom Bergeron was all these years. Oh, wow. You know, he hosted that show. Great, man. He was quick. He just knew how to throw things out and. Someone like Tyra, she doesn't have that. She's not a quick-witted person. She's not funny. That's not, a, that's not her thing. Uh, and so her thing is like, oh, yeah, oh. You know, just, oh, brutal, you just, you, you just offended Harry Basil with Love Island. Hey, Harry. I got a call. <laughs> oh, I got a call. Harry. <laughs> His name came up, and I need to ask him a question. No, but give, give, some, give some, uh, some serious suggestions, Johnny, oh. about Dr. Bruce you, 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 you really like. Well, no, I was kind of just joking around. I mean, I can't right now. Offhand, I can't. Although I'm thinking about jumping on Cobra Kai just to check it out because everybody seems to be talking about it. So, but go ahead, ask Harry because Harry's gonna he'll jump off quick. You gotta you gotta you gotta <laughs> ask him now. He's, Harry's probably already gone. He just said Love Island and probably took off. But I actually, he probably knew. did take off. Oh, I thought you were gonna ask him a question right now. Oh no, no, he just said Love Island, and then I just yeah. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um. Uh, that's a good documentary. Uh, another one that I enjoyed is um, the Nile Rodgers documentary. Oh, now that I would like that, I'd like to watch. You're, you're familiar with Nile Rodgers, correct? Yeah, the musician. Yeah, um, yeah. just just so Maybe. many just so many hits. And then when he was in the group, um, Chic, you know, they're the ones oh. that did the song, "Aw, Freak Out." Dun, oh, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because when you're listening, what's cool about these documentaries, oh, Basil said he's still here, and he said Happy Feet 1 and 2 is great. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, I'm going to call you. Uh, uh, a mutual friend of ours is looking for a comic, and, and uh, you might be able to, to help find him. So as soon as I finish, I'll be uh, calling you. Uh, Lionel B just chimed in, East Oakland in the house. Uh, we are talking about documentaries, good documentaries, and uh, I just mentioned uh, the Nile Rodgers documentary is great, and um, and also the David Foster documentary is really good. Um, I enjoyed the ACDC documentary, which uh, allowed me to be more knowledgeable about ACDC than Johnny. Um, I also, uh, hold on, uh, Harry Bezook says, I'll put it up. Oh. Because I heard Ron Howard's new doc, Rebuilding Paradise, is supposed to be awesome. Okay. Oh, wow. I didn't even know they had one on. Oh, I'd love to see one on Ron Howard, man. That's got to be great. Yeah. I um, I don't know. I lean more toward, I, I love music uh, documentaries. Just because when you're, when you're watching these, and especially a lot of these artists were really hot when we were younger, it's kind of cool to listen to the song and go, oh man, he produced that, he did that song. And then just how just how music was made back then, you know, with the live sessions and live yeah. musicians in the studio and all that right. stuff is just, is just kind of dope uh, uh, to watch. Yeah, the, um, uh, the Jeffrey, Ep uh, Jeffrey Keller said the Jeffrey Epstein doc was good. I think a lot of us have seen that. Have you seen that, Johnny? The Jeffrey Epstein doc. Okay, which now is there more than one? Because I feel like I've seen, or is that am I just watching the the Dateline ones and all that? No, there's one on uh, Netflix. Oh, okay. That's a full one that you should watch, and it's kind of what everybody's been talking about. That's the main yeah. one that you know, everybody has been uh, uh, talking how did, about. How did, how did Lionel B enjoy watching the Las Vegas Raiders? <laughs> Uh, he, he enjoyed it because, you know, Lionel is an original 
Oakland Raiders fans. You know, he went when he is well, bad. That's why, that's, why I'm ask, that's why I'm asking, Ruben. That was a, that was a purpose for that. I, I'm answering for him because he's not in this chat. <laughs> he, no. uh, yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell, let me explain. So he uh, he's an original Oakland Raider fan. So you know when they left the first time to go to L.A. and now they're in Vegas, it's really no difference for him. You know what I mean? Like he's already been hurt by them That's once. Right. I keep forgetting everybody. I keep forgetting. I'm an Oakland Raider fan. Ruben became a L.A. Raider fan. Not an, he wasn't an Oakland Raider fan. I will make to L.A. Here, here's the thing. I mean, when they were when they were, I was a fan of them. But of course, when they were here, because I wasn't going to root for the Rams. I just for some reason the Rams. Oh, when never, you were young, when you were young. Never, oh, never okay. a Rams fan, never. Okay. So uh, when the Raiders moved here, that kind of solidified it. Because, you know, you're going, as a kid, you don't know. A lot of times you root for who your parents root for, you know? So I sure. came from a family that had no rooting interest. Like they, my, my dad didn't have a team. My mom didn't have a team. You know what I mean? Coming from Haiti. You know, I wasn't oh. like... You know what I mean? It wasn't like I, I rooted for the Haiti Giants. You know what I mean? It's like there was no, you know what I mean? So I kind of had to find find my team and the Raiders. I think would go with machetes. I think it would be the Haiti machetes. <laughs> yeah, my dad had one. Uh, Lionel said he won't say Vegas, though. He'll just say say the Raiders. Raiders. Yeah, that, that yeah. was actually, I have to admit, the one thing that was annoying me on this first week of the NFL was the announcers going, and even on a recap, you know, they, they go, we got a, we've got some scores to show you. And then yeah. it's like, uh, so-and-so, uh, uh, car passed to so-and-so and Las Vegas is up by, two. and I was like, Oh, why are they saying Las Vegas? Just say Raiders. There's no way. Die hard. Die hard. Yo, James Moses black. Mm -hmm. Just climbed in. One of our great guests that was on here. He says, Jim. Yes. Yeah, uh, Cliff Branch, Lester Hayes, all Oakland legends. And uh, me and Lionel B were oh, talking about this. drunk. Come on. Uh, me and Lionel were talking about this, uh, Johnny, and you can chime in on, on this, is, you know, when you think of, like, the Hall of Fame, and we know, you know, there's, there's a lot of politics involved with sports writers, you know, choosing people, and sometimes they, some of them have personal agendas. Yeah. But it's just weird to me that Tom Flores – and Jim Punk Plunkett and uh, really? Todd 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 Christensen and oh. Cliff Rich are not in the NFL, and they I mean not in the Hall of Fame, and all of them have numbers to support them being there. Uh, when um, when uh, what am I trying to say? When when there's Other. people that are already in there oh. with with lower numbers or comparable oh. numbers. Totally, totally. I don't. So, you know, Tom Flores has made it. I think he's going to be a finalist. And uh, it will be great to see him in. You know, he's the first Latino coach hired by the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders have been always uh, at the forefront uh, in diversity. Uh, they hired the black coach, uh, black Latino coach. Uh, the Raiders have always had uh, black women. quarterbacks, Latin, Latino quarterback, women executives. executives. Um, so, um, you know, I, I like a lot of it is because of Al Davis, because he did always butt heads with with the commissioners and the, you know, NFL. They went to the court back in the what was that, the late nineties when he was dealing with court things or whatever. That was. I, so I still feel like they just got something. Uh, oh. The, the, You're dealing with a little static right now. Uh, James just said Cliff Branch was Tyreek Hill before he was Ty Hill, which is true. Tyreek Hill is the fast receiver, for you guys who don't know, of the Kansas City Chief, man. But, um, you know, even our draft pick this year, Ruggs, um, I mean, Al Davis would have, I'm sure he was smiling down with that pick, you know, because he's the fastest player, you know, in, in, the, in the draft uh, this, this past year. Uh, Joey Wells just said, um, as soon as you stop talking about the Raiders, I'm off of here. Because uh, <laughs> I've been killing them on the Clippers. Joey Wells is a Clippers fan. 
Uh, he won't return my text messages. He he claims he can't read them. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep it to uh, uh, to the to the to the Raiders. But uh, I just hope um, I just hope Tom Flores gets in. Man, he's getting up there in age, yeah. and I think he deserves to get in. Like they put Stabler in after he died, which was wrong. Uh, Brandt, you know, needs to be in. Like there's some Raiders that deserve to be in. And me and Lionel was talking about this also was. If it wasn't for the Pittsburgh Steelers, could you imagine how many Super Bowls the Raiders would have? Because most of the time, we would lose to the Steelers in the, in the championship game, and then they would go on to win. So we would have at least five right now, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's, um, it's just hey, interesting. Go ahead. Joey Wells said his phone is broke. <laughs> of course he did. And Leslie Saban just said, uh, since when do I play the piano? Leslie, I just I just got the piano flown in. You know, I had some extra money, so I just ordered the grand piano and had it uh flown in a couple of months ago. So um, you know, I I, I got uh you know, I got John Legend gonna, you know, fly in and give me some uh some piano lessons uh in a couple of weeks. You know, I'm I'm throwing a little little extra cash, you know, to come <laughs> <laughs> now Stan Felton keeps bringing up the New, New England Patriots. Uh, Stan, this is the wrong podcast for you to be talking anything Patriots. Even though, Johnny, you're going to be shocked what I'm about to tell you. Are you ready? What I'm about to tell you, Johnny? You're about to be happy to see Cam Newton do well and the Patriots win. Man, you really know me. I know you. I know you. Yeah, brother. But think about it, Johnny. Like, let's really think about it. Cam Newton, a former NFL MVP, no one wanted him. You know what I mean? And he's playing for a million dollars, dude. There's backups in the league making way more than a million dollars. You know? Yeah. <laughs> James, I got a, a Liberace piano. <laughs> I do, I do, I do root. <laughs> That's hilarious. I do root for Cam Newton. One, because he's in an underdog situation now. Yeah. And uh, we've debated this. I think a lot of the Patriots' success, not saying Tom Brady isn't a good quarterback. We all know he's a good quarterback. But we all do know that Belichick has a system, and he's won with every quarterback that he's had. So um, it, it, will great, it will be great to see Cam Newton thrive when everybody kind of – like the Bears should have picked him up. There's so many teams that you go, really? Cam Newton was available? And you didn't even go after him, like yeah. that's just that's just weird to me. So good for Cam Newton, and I'm happy for him. And I can't believe that I'm rooting for him. But it's kind of like I will say this: it's kind of like when Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and uh, Ray Allen were with the Celtics. And I remember Patrice O'Neill used to say, "Yeah, man, I root for the Black Celtics." <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you kind of feel, man. Sometimes, and especially I, that was my next. Question: Because I think if if it was his name was Cam Nunes, you wouldn't probably, you wouldn't be as uh, excited about it. Yeah, I would. I would. You know what I want to see one day, Johnny? It it would be dope to see like a full Chinese quarterback on an NFL team. You yeah. know what I mean? Or you know what I mean? Like just other yeah. races. Could you imagine like an Indian, like a full Indian. Indian quarter? What what would his snap count sound like, Johnny? What would he sound like? Oh, oh, that's right. What was I used to do? I almost feel bad about it, Johnny. If you're gonna, if I'm gonna be the straight guy, when I set you up, man, you gotta, you gotta finish, man. I have to remember what it was. I used to do it. I can't. How did I? Used, oh no! Wait a minute. <laughs> How did that go, Ruben? I forgot it already. Remember? Yeah, the performance so long. Johnny, for you guys listening, Johnny used to have a joke where he used to uh, make fun of how an Indian would sound at quarterback. I think it was a riff, Johnny. I don't think it was a full bit. I think it's something you used to just no, riff. No, it became a bit. It became a oh, bit. That, yeah, that you can't remember. Thank you. No, because I remember Raj would give me a hard time. Raj Sharma. Raj Sharma. Uh-huh. You think he's Indian or no? <laughs> you you think he's Indian or no? <laughs> That's so racist, man. 
Uh, but the reason why yeah, I, think I don't that, want to remember that, I'm going to bring it. I have to bring it back. But I see yeah. there was a. Yeah. Uh, James just said Jeremy Lin, and that's the the same type of effect that I think um, a quarterback would have in 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 football or or any at any position really. Because remember, everybody went crazy. Yeah. When uh, when Jeremy Lin, Jeremy Lin came on the scene. Yeah. And he played great, man. And I'm glad he ended up making a lot of money from being like a, you know, a walk on player and just coming out of nowhere and then having that year and then earning the big contracts. I, I was happy for him, man. What and it was, was his nickname? It was, what was it? Lin Test? Wait, what was the thing? Ben, ben, Lin Sanity, they used to say. Lin, Lin Sanity. Sanity. That's it. Yeah, Lin Sanity, um, which is great. But yeah, it would just be great to see. But it's, it's a cultural thing because. In a lot of countries, they don't play yeah. American football the way that that we play it. You know, Canada is really just starting to, you know, come into its own with sending athletes, you know, to, to America to play basketball and football. Like there, there's there's another uh, great documentary uh, about Vince Carter. You know, Vince Carter is half man, half amazing, uh, but he he was one of the first big stars that played for the Toronto Raptors years ago. Oh, and, okay. And, and he, listen to this, Johnny, because he was so exciting and so good, he influenced a generation of Canadians to play basketball. And now a lot of them are in the NBA. And when you ask them who their favorite basketball player is, it's like Vince Carter. It's not Michael Jordan. It's not like because Vince Carter was that person right there in their face that showed them like, oh, man, I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, that's why we, me and you talk about this a lot of time. Images are really important. When you see somebody who looks like you doing something or somebody that's where you're from doing something, it, it kind of gives you, you know, the hope that you can accomplish it too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's kind of like also on the entertainment side and stand-ups. Kind of like Russell Peters, remember? When, when he appeared on YouTube and it was just like, they were so young. I, when I talk to Indian comics, they're always like, Oh man, I was a kid and I saw Russell Peters on YouTube. And it was like, Absolutely. And you know, know and, and Russell doesn't like to take credit for it or talk about it, but Rudy, man, Rudy, all right, sorry. Rudy, what up Rudy? Um, but it must be like a, a, a crazy feeling to just be a comic just trying to make it and doing your thing and then realizing that you've influenced a whole generation of comedians. You know what I mean? All the Indian comedians or even the Asian, you know, Indians are Asian, uh, but all the other, like, you know, other ethnic Asian comedians that um, have started doing stand up is directly because they saw Russell do it. And he was talking about his culture in a way that it had never been talked about before. So, um, yeah. Yeah, he, about, about, yeah, about, I mean, changing a whole generation. Um, I try not to think about it too much. You know, I don't want my head to get too big. So, um, but I just, I keep it humble, man. I keep it humble. Humble, humble, humble. <laughs> so was it, do you think it was you and Speedy who, Speedy Gonzalez, who, who just really uh, in, in, influenced the whole generation? Well, I think. He, yeah, he influenced a generation with I, 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 I don't know if I can run away there, but Mr. Gato. But then I came along, and then there was there was Mexicans who saw me talking like this, and then some of them were like, "Wait a minute, I can talk like that? <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to go like this." <laughs> and look at look at what I created. Whole generation of even guys like Rene Garcia. Rene Garcia wouldn't be talking the way he talks if it wasn't for me. Oh, please. So, um, oh, yeah, about, let's. Uh, I might have to how, cut out like. How about Freddie um, Prince? Was Freddie Prince an influencer, you or no? Yeah, I love Freddie Prince. Did, but I, did, did he influence you in a way where you saw him? Like, I, I always, like, I, I, we, I mean, we talked about this before. It's not like you had a stereotypical Mexican upbringing, but was there any Latino performers that inspired you coming up? Whether it be Paul Rodriguez or Freddie Prince or George well, or anybody? 
like that. I mean, Paul and then, yeah, because Paul was a little bit like, like he can't, he really started hitting in the 80s. See, Freddie Prince was earlier, and his was really the series Chico and the Man. Mm -hmm. I didn't really hear Freddie Prince's um, stand up until later uh, when I was about thinking about getting into comedy. And then when I heard his comment, I was like, oh my God, I love this guy, man. Like he was the, he was the, you know, Puerto Rican Richard Pryor dude. That guy had a lot of talent, man. A lot mm -hmm. of talent. Could do voices and characters and, you know, but when you're a kid, but we love Chico and the man, you mm -hmm. know, but, and you know, what's funny. Nobody knew what he was. Like, we just were like, my dad just thought there was a Mexican guy on TV. On TV. Yeah. Where, you know, he's Puerto Rican. Same with, um, same with Eric Estrada. We all thought he was Mexican. He's Puerto Rican. But yeah. it wasn't that specific back then. But then when Paul came along, Paul, it was very like Paul represented Mexicans because Paul would say it. Paul mm -hmm. would always say he was Mexican. I'm Mexican then. Remember, he carried the Mexican. And you know, I carry the Mexican Express card. And then he'd pull out the switchblade. <laughs> yeah, so, I remember that. Yeah, so Paul specifically really told everybody I'm Mexican, I'm Mexican. With the other guys, they didn't really talk about their heritage. You know, we didn't know. I mean, Freddie did, but we didn't, he didn't talk about that on the show from what I remember and Chico and the man, you know what I mean? You know, you know, what's interesting is, you know, George is on record saying that Freddie Prince was a huge influence for him, even to the point where, you know, he befriended uh, Freddie's son, Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, obviously prior, but it's, I just remember watching, um, what was it? Uh, uh, it might've been Evening at the Improv or, or, or Comic Relief. Or Spotlight, and, H1 Spotlight or something. And, 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 and seeing Paul Rodriguez and just going, oh, just thinking that that was really cool. You know what I mean? And then um, later on meeting George Lopez and seeing you know, because when I when I first saw him, I think I saw him. It might have been on Arsenio, mm, but yeah. Then, but then when I saw him, I think it might have been after the Arsenio performances. His comedy was way different from when I saw it on Evening at the Improv, and it was he took the Mexican Chicano route. Like I'm just going to talk about being Mexican, where Paul remained mainstream, basically from a perspective of you know, I'm Latino, but I'm just telling, I just happen to be Latino, but I'm just telling these these jokes. Yeah. Where George really dug into that Mexican American experience. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, I mean, but I mean, look at both of the impacts that they've had in such yeah. a short time. I mean, it's only 2000, 2020 and, you know, they started in the seventies, man. And yeah. look at all the comedians who have come after that in an art form. I wonder if there have been, we should do some research and find out, were there any Latino comedians before Paul and, and Freddie? Or were they like the pioneers? Think about that. That's really recent, man, if you really think about that. Yeah. Like you mean in the, in the 50s and 60s, were there any? Yeah. Were there any, you know, like Latino, like doing comedy in America, like the traditional- yeah, right. in America. You know, the American style of, of, of stand up, you know? That's a, I don't, Rudy would know. That'd be a Rudy? good question. We also, we, we should get Rudy on here. It'd be great to have Rudy on here too. I gotta I reach out to him. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, we got, listen, we have so many, I feel yeah. like I said, I think we could, um, you know, get on here and uh, that would be Rudy might know that man. I don't know. I mean, I knew that I knew the guys when I started. There was a, you know, there were these other dudes that had been doing it way before me. You know, uh, Raul Martinez, Dante Garza, uh, Johnny. Um, oh, what was Johnny Rojas? Um, Renee Sandoval. I mean, these guys were already. They were around. They had started around the same time as Paul. I mean, uh, they were mm -hmm. in their stuff maybe a little after, but. You know they had, they had put their time in, man. So there was a lot of them that didn't hit that big, unfortunately. You know, Johnny. I mean, uh, James just said uh, Desi Arnaz. Now was Desi was Desi Desi didn't do stand up, did he? I, from what I know, he was. I, from what I know, he was not a stand up. He's a musician, and then he mm -hmm. ended up on the, you know creating the show with 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 um, 
Lucille Ball. So I don't know. And he was he was he was great on that show, by the way. He was <laughs> fantastic, he was, man. I thought he was absolutely great. Oh, they both were. Oh, of course. She goes without saying, but I don't I don't think he gets a lot of the credit. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey that, that was crazy for, for a guy who was a Cuban immigrant to have a show on TV, dude, with an accent like that back then. Yeah. I mean, it was groundbreaking, and you would have thought that that would have continued for Latinos in television. Isn't it sad that it, it you know, there's always an exception to the rule. You know, we we deal with that a lot in Hollywood, where we kind of get, we they they kind of set forth this criteria that everybody that everybody's supposed to follow. Oh but yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. like ah. Uh, you know, you have to do this. Uh, no first-time writers, and no no leads can be a first-time actor, or no this or no that. But I, I mean, kudos to the people out there who just hire, go with their gut and hire yeah. the best people and go for the best projects because everybody has to be a first time at some point. And right. you know, a lot of times when you're going through whatever checklist, you're still losing on that checklist anyway. So why, if you're gonna go down, why not go down? Like, cause, you know, me and you have both been in situations, and I know I've lost out on a on a couple of parts just because ah, uh, they wanted to go with somebody, you know, with a little bit more experience or had more exposure, or whatever. A bigger then, name, a bigger name. That's what I'm saying, a bigger name, and then the show flops anyway. It's like, who knows, man? Maybe that show could be the next, you know, uh, star making vehicle for for. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I want to say one real quick. We did a we did a I Love Lucy sketch on Matt TV, mm -hmm. and I was so looking forward to it, Ruben. I, I, I I'm not the best at impressions, and 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 Desi Arnaz was not one that I uh, had ever done before. But I remember working on it. But here's what happened: I went on the road. We had a we had a, a break, a week off or something, and I went and did the road, and I came back, and that was you know Wednesday through Sundays. Remember how that was? So doing seven or eight shows, whatever. And I, man, my voice was so shot, dude, when I came back, like lost my voice. So I'm so bummed because in that sketch, I don't sound anything like Desi Arnaz, you know? Really? Even even like I was trying to talk, but you could hear the rasp in my I voice. I remember that. Cause you know, oh. I, taped, I taped every episode you were on, thank you. I was your friend. You take them, you. you just didn't watch them. I watched every episode of you on Mad TV, even though you ghosted me while you're a cast member. But we'll we'll talk about that another <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes in Hollywood, when your friends get a gig, man, they they ghost you, man. They don't talk to hey, you. Hey, man. Until. Let me it's tell you that that show was a lot, dude. That show was a lot, man. That's a lot of work on that show. People don't understand, man. I'm just, I'm just messing. You, 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 yeah. you, you still call me back. Um, <laughs> with you, but but it's funny because on that sketch, I'm just like I, I tried to do his laugh, and I remember I got, I was close before, but I came back with my voice completely shot, and it was like oh oh oh, you know. What I mean? like, yeah. I couldn't get high. I couldn't get that falsetto that he, you know, but but the sketches. I'm hardly in it. The guy who plays uh, Fred, uh, he did great. Matt Bronger, which is funny because Matt Bronger is like six four, and he was uh -huh. playing Fred. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so, but, like, but he was great. But we we were in a little scene. We leave. But man, Nicole Parker and Krista Flanagan, dude, as as um, Lucy and Ethel killed it it's really risque it's it's them two being totally risque back then they killed it in that sketch dude they were so good so good well you, you know what's interesting is um like growing up we know watching i love lucy was all all reruns and yeah. isn't it funny sometimes when we look back at these shows johnny and we find out two seasons three seasons one season you go what I thought right. they were on here for like 10 years and it'd be like only two seasons and we just see the episodes over and over. And I, I think I Love Lucy was six seasons, if I'm not. Six seasons, but get this. Uh, 1951 to 1957, only just because I was just, uh, I knew some of this, but I was reading up on her documentary. Um, uh -huh. well, I mean, we all know it's been running in reruns 
since uh, it ended in 57. But I didn't know that they were running reruns after the very first season in 1951. So it has never stopped running reruns. I Love Lucy is it's it it's they show it how many countries worldwide did, do it's like I know. Didn't, didn't I hear something and I could, you might know this but didn't they renegotiate their syndication deal or something later on I mean that would not surprise me since they started their own I didn't realize this when they started Desilu production it was because the the uh, studio that they were working out of that gave them their first shot was EK, EKR or something, um, or R, R, RKO Studios. Uh, well, they bought that in 19, right after they finished their series. They bought that studio, and that's when they started, um, you know, Desilu Productions. So it might have been that they redid it because if you look, Desilu Productions is on all of the episodes. Mm hmm. Where there was no Desi Lou in the beginning when they were doing the show. Well, my, that might that might be the answer to that. They question. probably re, they renegotiate, but dude, it has never stopped airing in rerun since 1951, and, and it's in like it's in 200 countries or so. I mean, it, it's it's everywhere it, in the world. Ex explain to everybody uh, what syndication is and what the money is and and why that's so important for the creators of a show. Well, from what I, I mean, what I know from syndication is uh, when you sort of like how Byron Allen does, you you shoot a show, you have your show, and then you sell it to the markets yourself, the ind mm -hmm. independent markets. It's not like, you know, NBC has a hold of it and CBS, it's yours. And then they put them on there and at different times. And, mm -hmm. and I, that's why it's always funny how you, you notice, same with the Brady Bunch and all these other old, they're, they just run and run. Now, who gets, obviously, the studio, and how does that work in syndication with people who wrote on the show and all that? Are they still getting residuals? Yes. Or do they still get? Yeah, so to break it to so the... Uh, you might know to, that, right? So to piggyback on, like, we all know through working in this business, man, when, whenever you know somebody who's on a, a series, they're like, man, I just want to make it to syndication. Because usually, and, and that might have changed now based on just the nature of television and how, how everything is streaming and all that stuff now. And they're buying, you know, shows and in, in, in a block that are going to be up there forever anyway. So that's going to probably, you know, or, or should be up there for a long time. But yeah. Um, yeah. just the enormous amounts of money that uh, these producers and creators get from a show going in syndication where... You know, when Seinfeld, I think, set the record syndication deal, I think they got some crazy amount. Hold on, I could tell you right now. Seinfeld syndication. While you're looking, I'm remembering the bit. The bit was an Indian guy would have would make one hell of a quarterback because of his hard count. Uh-huh. He wouldn't even have to do a play. He'd just be like, we're going to do a uh, 45 of play on two. And then he'd walk in and go, ha, da, da, like that. And they and he didn't have to do a play. He They'd just be five-yard penalties all the way down. That's what it was. <laughs> got to bring that bit back, Jack, when we get back into the clubs. Because you know what? Everybody's so sensitive now. I almost want to go that route when we go back, room to like just do as much ethnic stuff that – Pisses people off. Okay, so here we go. Just because you know TBS originally bought Seinfeld uh, for in this oh, yes. TBS. Yeah. And they said they're paying about four hundred thousand an episode. So to do the math, you would just take every episode of Seinfeld that was recorded and multiply that times four hundred thousand. Yeah, that's that's, you know. So I think I think that equated to like four hundred million or something like that. Yeah, Maybe. that sounds that that does sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four hundred million dollars. Yeah. Well, and, and people wonder why he's not rushing out <laughs> to do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's still, but yet he's still doing his, you know, uh, commentary. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. 
Um, he's he's got to be making a bunch on that. That's a you know that's a, a hit show too as well. And um, but at least you can at least you can say this: that show was great. It was. It was really so, really you know really well done. Yeah, really, really, well really well done. And when you hear about other shows, you're like, oh, that show went in the syndication. You're like, oh, geez. Yeah. You know, the, the real awful ones that people watch. You know what I mean? At least Seinfeld's totally legit. So, yeah. And uh, I just think, I think with all the different platforms that we have now, people are just looking for content. So, if they can find a show that had 100, what, what's the key to uh, syndication? 100 episodes? You want to get to 100 for syndication? Oh, you know what? That I don't, I was not aware that there's a number. Yeah, there's I a know, number. I thought, it was five I thought it was five seasons and it goes into syndication. That used to be the rule. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a, a specific number of episodes that oh. you get to you okay. into, uh, in, into that. Just because with some seasons, you know, someone might have a, a eight episode season now. Someone might have a, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes, yeah. it's, it's um, totally different. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right, we, we kind of talked about a, a lot today, but um, I will say that, you know, with with how things are, are constantly changing, it's going to be interesting to see what everything is going to look like, you know, going forward. I know we keep saying this, but I mean, we're still in limbo, you know, in terms of, you know, what the future is going to hold. Even now, okay. go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's just interesting because I it's like for me, man, I, I like I wanna I wanna watch some of these comedy shows that are that are happening in the back of someone's pickup and 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 backyard and on the on the a park in the parking lot. But you know, at the same time, you know, I just wanna go down there and watch. You know what I mean? But you know you. I Joey Wells Joey Wells just uh chimed in and said uh it has changed. So what does it change to uh Joey if you could uh uh, chime in, um, you know, Joey, a uh, great comic, great writer. Um, he has that show, um, uh, 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 Heart of the City, he uh, created for Comedy oh. Central. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, Heart of the City. Yeah, he, he created that show, and uh, he and Kevin Hart, Kevin is the host of it. But, um, yeah, dude, it's just, you know, I've me and you both have a lot of friends whose productions have been shut down, shows yeah. that have been put on limbo, Shows that they are that were on the fence that might get picked up because of the pandemic. They're like, uh, uh, no, you know. So it's just interesting to see what's going to happen. But I'm I'm curious to find out what that syndication number is, what the rule for syndication is, because it, yeah, yeah, I definitely know it 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 had that changed. But it's um, weird because for some reason I'm not getting any more um, comments on the on on the. Uh, it stopped with Rudy Moreno was watching. There mm -hmm. he is. Oh, yes. he said episodes as a season. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, that would have to uh, change that. Yeah. It used to be 12. And then I, I remember hearing about 15 episode seasons. Some, sh some shows have a 15 episodes in a season. So, you know, I think. Oh, you uh, know, yeah. Back in the day, they were like 26. Remember? Oh, in one season? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I think I remember something like that, but that's yeah, because Bobby told me when he was on Mad, it was twenty, it was twenty somewhere between twenty two and twenty six. That was the norm back in the eighties and nineties and all that. Man, they did a ton of episodes, dude. Beesh, a bunch man. of episodes. Yeah, well, it's, it's changed now. Well, I'm, hey, man, it's about adapting and adjusting, and um, you know, finding out what is going to be and creating our own lane uh, doing that, but um. All right, man. Well, all right. Well, it got through it. I had a frustrating day today, so I, I know. I could tell. Yeah, I, um, could, I, I could tell, man. <laughs> I mean, you, you, <laughs> you look exhausted. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like it's just been bring it on, man. And it's uh, this whole thing is real frustrating. I feel for the kids, but um, anyway, yeah, that was great, man. And uh, sorry to the. Um, Oh, there we go. He said Nickelodeon does 24. Yeah, see, 24. Yeah. That used to be, it was around there before, back in the day, man. Like, actors made tons of money, dude, because, shoot, they're getting 10 grand an episode when they're starting out and they're doing 24 episodes that season. Come on, yeah. man. Come on, Come man. On. Come on, man. <laughs> 
I uh, mean, it, I mean, we, we we can go into it another time, but it's just like when we talk about commercials, what commercials used to pay. You compared to what, yeah, compared. You know, I know we both know people who have bought homes off of a commercial campaign. So I'm not saying you can't make great money now, but it used to be way different. And now they do those buyouts where it's like, here, they're going to pay you this much. Mm -hmm. and, and they just run the hell out of it. And you look and go, oh, man. Like, yeah. residual-wise, that would have made a killing, you know? Yeah. Thanks, Stan. Yeah, thank you, Stan. Thank you to everybody who listened. Uh, we got to get out of here. We're over. We're at an hour and 10, man. I mean, man, I didn't think now, I could carry you. I'm making it 30, 30 I, minutes. I, I, yeah, I didn't think I could carry you this long, man. I'm glad I made it through it. Um, so let's. Uh, <laughs> I don't have time anymore, man. It's, we got to make it 30, okay, bro? Oh, whatever, man. He said go past. But again, people, thank you uh, yeah, for listening, man. Right. We, we appreciate everybody. Once again, tell a friend. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you can find a, uh, a podcast, you can find us. And then you can also find us on my YouTube channel. And um, you can subscribe there and watch the episodes there. But um, once again, man, uh, thank you guys. And uh, yeah. we out. We out. Till next week. Ruby, mother, and Tuesdays. This show is all about diversity and bringing everyone together. See you at Ruby Tunes next.